Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be how to take better travel photos because it's just about summertime. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna be going on some trips. Even if you're not, you can still get some cool travel-esque photos wherever you live. Also, just wanna give a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, check out Squarespace. You can get it all in one place and I'll have more information on that at the end of this video. But now let's get into the travel photo tips. The first tip is to use a wide angle lens. By using a wide lens, you're able to get so much more of the landscape in the photo as well as yourself. And you'll notice if you look at a lot of travel Instagram accounts, the landscape takes up most of the photo and the person is usually pretty small in the photo. So feel free to back up from your subject, go farther back than you think you need. If you have a lens that goes in pretty tight, like a 50 millimeter, you're not gonna be able to get in as much of the landscape. You might get a really nice portrait, but for travel photos, or if you're trying to make an overall travel theme or travel feed, it's not gonna have that travel look. It's gonna look more just like the person that's in the photo. So get a little more comfortable with having the landscape take up a bigger portion of the photo and the subject just being smaller in it. Next, if you want to get cool travel photos, find a rooftop. So if you can sneak onto a cool rooftop or if you know of a cool rooftop, that always works. But sometimes that's not really available, but you can always find a parking garage that's pretty tall and shoot on the rooftop there. So we're in Santa Monica right now and this parking garage is tall enough that you can see some buildings. So it'll get a nice cool shot up here. So we had Adrian sitting on this block, but it didn't drop off like 10 stories or anything. Even with that, be careful, only do what you're comfortable doing. So when you go to a rooftop location, be sure to get a high angle. So don't be afraid to put your camera up really high. The reason you want to do this is to capture more of the landscape. If you're shooting from a low angle or just from a standard eye level angle, you're not going to get as much of the city in the photo, but it's going to be a little more impressive and grand looking if you shoot from a high angle and get more of the city in it. Most major cities also have a bunch of rooftop bars and restaurants that you can check out, and these will usually have some kind of cool lighting, maybe some nice couches, just a little more luxurious than a parking garage rooftop basically. And again, you can really see with the high angle that this shows off the city versus with a low angle it does look pretty cool but you could be in any city so it's not the best if you're trying to do the whole travel feed so let's say you're at some kind of monument or just a touristy spot with a really like picturesque location in this situation you're gonna want to do the opposite and shoot at a low angle so for this we're doing the Santa Monica Ferris wheel so if you shoot straight on you're not gonna get all of the monument or whatever you want in the frame it's just gonna look like a typical photo but if you you shoot at a low angle it's gonna have this really grand look to it and get the whole thing in the frame especially if you have a nice wide lens so you can see here I basically laid down on the ground to get the shot as wide as I could but take a look at just a normal eye level shot versus when we go down low this is a little bit off center but it really shows the location in such a cool angle it's definitely worth going the extra mile and getting in some kind of uncomfortable position this is a workout <laughs> I'm shaking! Oh. Also, if your camera has a flip out screen, you can flip that out and it'll help you see a little bit better without having to go down too far. So here's the finished photo we shot from a low angle versus just your standard eye level shot would look something like this. All right, next this one is kind of random, but if you are scouting out a random stranger to take your photo, try and find someone who looks like they have a cool Instagram. You know what I'm talking about. Don't go for the old person who probably doesn't even have an Instagram account. Excuse me, could you take a photo of me real quick? for Like an sure. Instagram picture, kind of? What's Instagram? One, two, three, say cheese. Yeah. Do you want me to take another? Oh, no, no. This is good. This is great. Yeah, thanks. Great. So scout out the person that you think is going to be a good photographer. If you see someone who's holding a DSLR camera, that's even better because they, you know, have some photography experience. Hi, could you take a picture of me real quick? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Oh my gosh, yes. Why don't you like go over to those cars? Those are super cool. Okay. Oh. Cool. Yes, yes. Ooh, flip your hair a little bit. Yet, oh, girl. Oh my gosh, gotta get all the angles. Hold on, let me really get down. Oh my gosh, you are so pretty. And they're probably not gonna be as into it as this ridiculous little sketch that we did, but they're more likely to take multiple photos and maybe frame it a little nicer. The next tip is to get a Bluetooth remote and mini tripod for your iPhone or camera. 
So this is just if you wanna get some pictures on your phone or on a little camera. So if you know you're gonna be traveling somewhere alone and you wanna have the option to still control your shot completely versus having a random stranger who maybe isn't so good with photography take the photo, you can click the remote as many times as you want. And even if you're not traveling alone, maybe you're traveling in a group, you can set this thing up and get a group picture with everyone in it. All right guys, hope that you've enjoyed this video. Those are all the tips I have for today. If you have any more, be sure to comment them down below or if you learned one that you think is gonna be really helpful and I'll like them so that other people can see them. Also, like I said in the beginning, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you guys are looking to make a photography website or an online store or just any kind of website in general, definitely check out Squarespace. They have a ton of templates that make it super easy to make a website. You don't have to know any coding or anything like that and honestly, you don't even have to know how to design a website because the templates sort of do it for you. You can just plug in all the information and photos that you want. So it makes it super easy. If you are a photographer and you're trying to get more clients or just want a nice professional looking place to display your photos, definitely check out a Squarespace website. They look really good and it won't take you too much time to get it set up. So head over to squarespace.com if you wanna start your free trial. And then when you're ready to purchase your domain or your website, go to squarespace.com slash Shelby for 10% off. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.